Hi, my name is Christy Wassmiller, and I'm the Online Training Account Manager here at Mentoring Minds. Today I'm going to show you how to maximize total motivation for summer school. I will show you how to register, set up your classes, make assignments, develop your lesson plan, and measure progress. Now before we begin, it is important to note that if you used Motivation Online for the school year, you will want to make sure that you have a clean slate for summer school. An administrator will need to go in and perform some end-of-the-year processes to collect any existing assignments from the previous school year. There is a recorded webinar entitled Closing Out the School Year with Motivation Online on our Resources Center, as well as a tutorial video on archiving and promoting students. And I will show you where to locate these additional resources at the end of our webinar. Now to begin, you will need the code from your teacher edition in order to register into Motivation Online. So please have that card handy and go to www.mentoringmindsonline.com. Now if you're a new user, you will click on New User, select your role, and enter your registration code. From here, you can follow the prompts to complete the registration process. If you used Motivation Online during the school year, you will already have a username and password to access the system. Now there is an in-depth tutorial video um, that does walk you through step-by-step -step, um, on how to register as a teacher, and I will point that out for you um, at the end of our webinar on that resources site. Now once you have registered into the system, you're going to want to log in as a teacher. And once you log in as a teacher, you will be taken to the teacher homepage. And it will look like this, but I am using a demo account today, so you won't see the sample reports button. But you will see assignments, report, management, import users, as well as a grade assignment and a whiteboard shortcut. What we want to do after registering is go in and set up our classes. So what I'm going to do is click on the management button. And that will take you where you can set up your classes and also add your students into the system. To set up a class, you'll click on the Add button in the top right-hand corner of your screen on the Classes purple header bar. You'll name your class. And then you'll add your title that you want to add to the class. You will get a prompt saying, you know, please confirm that you have selected the correct titles, that you are authorized to use the title, and that you could take away seats if this isn't the correct title from the teacher who should be teaching it. Uh, once you have read through that, click on Proceed and click on OK to save. Please make note of the class code information that pops up on the side of your screen. Students can use that to self-register into the system. If you do have any additional classes you want to add, you can do that uh, by following the same steps, clicking on Add and adding your classes. Once you have your classes set up, you really need to add your students to your class. Um, and there are a few ways to add students. The students can be added manually. You may import the students, or you can have the students utilize the class code to, cl uh, to self-register into the system. Now, if you do have students that were already using Motivation Online during the school year, they will already have a username and password, but you still would need to go in and add them to your class. And to do so, you can highlight your class over here, select Edit in the Details bar, select Edit under Student, and it will pull up a list of available students for your school um, that have been put into the system. You can search for students and then add them into your class. Now to add new students, you will see a purple header bar that says My Students at the bottom. You can click on Add and then type in your student name. Student IDs do need to have um, six characters as well as their password also has to have six characters. Um, you need to select their grade level and then you can add them to the classes that you have set up. Click on Save. And that student will be added to your class. You'll notice that it shows you all users. And just to show your students, you'll just click on Show My Students. There 
is another way to get students into the system and to show you that. I'm going to briefly show you how to import students. You'll click on Home, click on the Import Users button, and it will give you a list of the students that are already in the system. You can search by student to see if they're already there, and we'll see our students there. Um, if you already have them in the system, somebody's already loaded them, you can click Cancel. The students are here. Um, you can click to download an import template so that you can fill it out and load it. Or if you've already filled out the import template and you want to upload it, you just click on select the import file to use and load it. We do have a tutorial video under importing um, students into the system. Um, so you might want to look at that and I will show you um, our resources center once again and that will show you where um, you can locate that. Now once your students and classes have been set up, um, I do want to point out in the management screen where we were, you can also create small groups. So at the end of the year, if you have some specific uh, scores and data points that you're looking at and you want to go ahead and create some small groups in summer school, you can actually do that by clicking on Show Groups and clicking Add and following the same format that we did to add our new class. So if we wanted to create a small group, um, you can click on Edit, and that will give you the available students that you've added into your classes to use to create your small groups. Now, after you've completed setting up your classes and your groups and adding all of your students, you're really ready now to dig into your teacher edition to determine what you want to assign to your students. And you might utilize some different data points that you can really use to help you figure out where you should begin. If you did use total motivation during the school year, you may want to utilize the standards mastery report, um, some other data points that may be uh, your most recent benchmark, your standards identified by your district, or results from state assessments if you have those. Now, Total Motivation has been selected as a resource to support your summer school program because it is flexible and helps to support those standards that you need to focus on. So you need to determine how many hours that you'll be using Total Motivation during the summer. So if you are going to be using it, say, four days a week, you may choose just to cover one unit in two days. And just to let you know, most schools will cover between four and 12 units during summer school. So to access your teacher edition easily, if I go back to the home page, we can click on our whiteboard shortcut. And if we pull that up, we're able to locate the subject that we want to view. And then you can select the unit or level. What I want to briefly do is look at the table of contents and pull it up into full screen by projecting on our whiteboard mode. And the table of contents is really going to help you locate the instructional support for each standard that you're looking for. And you can really utilize this teacher edition to assist you in your lesson planning. And so you can view which um, standards that you want to briefly look at. You can choose which ones you want to start with. And what I want to do is walk you through um, our uh, teacher edition just to kind of give you an idea of the components in each of the teacher edition. So I'm going to select a unit and I'm going to pull it up into full screen for you. And we'll briefly walk through this. Um, as you can see, we do have unpacking the standards for you. And what that's going to be is going to um, help you really identify those prerequisite skills. Um, so that way you know how that standard has developed from prior learning and the background to which the students have been exposed. It also shows you where students are heading in their learning. And it's going to help you better understand the standard and also provide clear expectation for student learning under direct instruction. And after you have edified yourself on that standard, there is a plethora of activities to really support teacher-directed instruction. Um, we have our getting started introductory activities, um, and these can be used as an anticipatory set. It helps to activate domain knowledge and really build interest. It does allow students to make those connections to their prior learning. Uh, we're currently looking at math, and for math, um, it does have hands-on activities that involve use of manipulatives. Um, you might see with ELA, it does have read-aloud activities and opportunities to use graphic organizers. And also, within every component, we have um, built-in suggested formative assessment to really help you check for student understanding. Um, critical thinking is also infused throughout all subjects in total motivation. You'll see children's literature connections, and these are authentic literature titles that are used to introduce or reinforce concepts. Um, you can introduce the unit by reading a book to the students and really reinforce the vocabulary from the unit 
by reading that book aloud and letting the student make real-world connections to that vocabulary. Now, there also are vocabulary focus activities, and you know that vocabulary is very critical to students mastering those standards that are identified, and um, these are activities to really reinforce, uh, reinforce vocabulary. Um, students in Motivation Online under the student side do have uh, the ability to locate a glossary to locate some terms and definitions if they do have any uh, trouble understanding. To go a little further, we do have suggested instructional activities, and these are two to four teacher-tested activities for direct instruction, which help to promote student mastery. These will be coded at various levels at the DOK and Revised Blooms to really determine students' ability to apply skills in different contexts. These really give students opportunities to problem solve, justify their thinking, organize their information, and communicate about the concepts both written and also verbally. We do have suggested reflection and closure activities for you, and these are going to really allow students to reflect upon the instruction and summarize their understanding of the concepts. Now, these are always going to be coded to a higher level of DOK, so that way you can truly evaluate the student understanding, and typically you're going to see that these might be a journal prompt as well. We do have built-in interventions, and as you are going through the unit and conducting those formative assessments, if you notice that students aren't quite tracking along with instruction, um, there are activities here that are already created for you to go back and work with those identified students. Now we also have these extending student thinking activities in math, and this is an extension activity which is great for enrichment and allows you as a teacher to really differentiate your instruction for students who are excelling prior to others in class. And it does give the students an opportunity to make real world connections. And you'll see your answer codings are here as well. I do want to pull up briefly the student edition so you can see what it looks like. And we will be looking at the student side of motivation online. In our student edition, uh, we do have six to eight pages of targeted practice per standard. Now, you can view the different formats of the questions you're going to see in Motivation Online um, by looking through these. It's going to be the exact same type of format. So if it's draw a line to or drag and drop or circle, it's going to be the option that they'll have online as well. Um, so here, students would be able to type in their answer. You might utilize the introduction page and utilize your smart board like we're doing here to really show some whole group modeling and to introduce the lesson into your students as well. Now after you've determined which assignments that you want to give to your students, um, you need to go in and, and make those assignments to them. So what I'm going to do is click on the home page, go into assignments, into new assignment, select the class or group that I want to make the assignment to. You'll see that you can either select individual students or select all students, which it does default to. You'll select your subject and level, and if those are just going to show whatever uh, lesson or whatever subject you have registered into the system. You're going to go in and find the assignment that you want to make and make those assignments to the student. You'll click on Assign Now, and it will go to those students who have been selected from your class. Um, this preview button I do want to point out, if you click on preview, it does take you where we were, um, at the, like the whiteboard shortcut where you can pull up either the student edition or the teacher edition or you can scroll separately through those. So we do see that these are highlighted in green. These have been passed out to the students. So what I want to do now is actually log out as a teacher and log in as a student to show you what the student side looks like when they are going in to complete assignments. Now, whether you're a teacher or a student, <clears throat> you will log in on uh, mentoringmindsonline.com. And the students would just use the user ID and password that you created for them when they logged into the system. As you can see, we have several assignments. And you can either um, continue, a student can continue an assignment, or start a new assignment. So we'll look and see what we have started here. And, uh, we could either continue one or start a new one. And I'm going to click on Start to show you just what type of um, format it looks like in the online system. <clears throat> so 
So as you'll see, there's some different formats um, that students can complete uh, when they're completing the online system. So this says draw lines to match the numbers to the dice so the computer or the student would actually have a chance to do so um, when they are uh, going in and doing this. So um, I'll briefly complete this so you can see um, what the students would do. Um, they would go in after they've completed their question and click on Save Answer to move on to the next question. It does give them um, automatic feedback if um, something can be graded by the computer, if it's one answer or multiple choice, um, it will be graded by the system for you and will automatically feed into your online progress monitoring report. Um, it does reinforce the correct answer. Students can see that they have 100%. They can go to the next question. Um, I will answer the question, click on Save Answer, and it does give that um, automatic feedback. Students do have access to a highlighter, a ruler, a scratch pad, as well as the resources, which we're looking at level one. They have access to that math glossary, and they're able to flip through here and locate any terms or definitions that they might have a question about. They can view on different screens. They can view split screen on top of each other, or back to full screen. When the student's ready to move on, they click on Next. I'm going to go ahead and answer it incorrectly so that we can see if they do get it incorrect. It does give the um, highlighted in red. It does give the correct answer, and it gives them um, their percentage off to the side. If they do have a teacher-graded question, such as a critical thinking activity that they had to type in, um, you would see a TG in blue off to the side here as well. Um, students can skip. They can also flag a question so if they want to um, know how, why they missed this. They might flag it. You might walk around and help them to determine why they missed this question. Now, if a student has um, run out of time or um, the class is over, they need to pause the assignment, they would just click on pause, and they would be able to come back to that later instead of clicking on submit. If they click on submit and they're not com they have not completed the assignment, those answers that they have not answered would be counted wrong. So I'm going to sign out as a student and go back in as a teacher so that you can see what the um, look what it looks like when you are utilizing your progress monitoring monitoring report. And as I mentioned, um, you are able to log in at mentoringmindsonline.com. And you'll be able to pick whichever parameters that you want to run that report. Um, you can report, run reports separately by class or by group. So if you want to run reports on any of the small groups that you've created, you're able to do that. You're also able to select either the standards mastery or item analysis. Um, as I mentioned, run by class or by group. Um, you can run it by any subject. If you have multiple subjects, um, you can run that by any subject that you have. Or you can also... Um, go in and change your date range if you want to just see it for the next few days or if you want to see it from like the last few weeks of summer school, you can actually generate that report. I want to go ahead and utilize my sample report um, for demo purposes just to show you what it looks like when you have a full report um, that has a lot of students, so something that you might see a few weeks into summer school. And I'm going to pull a level three math since we were looking at level three math in our walkthrough. And the benefits, really, of these reports are going to help you identify um, gaps in student learning very quickly. Um, you might be able to, to identify what students need enrichment or intervention, help you kind of create your grouping, as well as the different components you can utilize within your teacher edition to help drive your instruction. Now, if you notice, um, visually, you can see kind of how your class is doing at a glance. Um, if we hover over the standard, we can see what those standards, um, a description of what those standards are. Um, so you can really utilize this color coding to quickly see what standards you might need to go in and, and do some additional activities with. Um, the legend can be edited to reflect any class goals or school level goals um, or district level goals. So the colors would be representative of, of your goals. You can print or export. And then this is sorted by student, but you can also sort by percentage, which I really like because if we see, it kind of gives you an idea of what your groupings could look like. And so once you see it laid out like this, you can actually go back into your teacher edition and identify some activities. So for these students who might be exceeding expectations, you might utilize critical thinking activities, 
some additional motivation station activities uh, for journaling, possibly. Um, we did look at motivation math, and we do have those extended student thinking activities within the teacher edition. Um, for ELA, we have performance task assessments within the teacher edition as well. And both of those are examples um, are, are, are going to be coded at higher levels of DOK. Now, for the students that are kind of in the middle um, and meeting expectations, you might utilize some peer collaboration and making other assignments such as critical thinking or journaling. And for these students here that are not quite meeting expectations, you can use those built-in interventions that we looked at within, the uh, within each teacher edition unit, as well as they might um, benefit from some additional vocabulary focus. So you can really use the information in this standards mastery report to differentiate your students who may need enrichment or those that are showing gaps. Um, you can determine if certain standards might need whole group instruction, or if it best, it's best to create some focus small groups and, and really focus on those if, for most of the part, the whole class is doing all right. Um, you can also go back in and utilize whiteboard functionality within Motivation Online to go in and model that lesson. So we looked at some possibilities for modeling and, and utilizing modeling for either whole group or small group. And you can go back and, and reassign that lesson to those students that might need that focused attention. Um, and of course, reassigning does not replace reteaching. So you know, please go back in and, and reteach, especially um, uh, to what you see as uh, is needed. Uh, one other thing, if you do extend down, you can expand this and really dig in to see how students have done on particular activities. Um, and one thing you might want to do is if you're seeing something that's concerning here and you notice multiple kids are um, having issues with a certain activity, you can actually pull a more focused item analysis report. Um, so I'm going to pull our item analysis for that level that we were looking at. And if you have concerns, you can actually dig a little bit deeper into it by pulling that item analysis report. You'll notice that this is going to look pretty similar. It is color-coded, so you do have the ability to uh, edit that legend as well. And then um, it is going to be color-coded, so you can kind of visually see how you're doing on each question in a certain activity or assessment item. And this is going to help you identify common and uncommon trends. And you can utilize this information to really refer back to the question. So as we see, question five is uh, doing very well. Our students are doing very well in question five, but maybe not question one. So what um, differences can we see here? You might dig back in um, to see what the DOK level is for question five versus the DOK level for question one. And it kind of gives you some ideas on um, you know, what things that you can do. So really use the power of these reports to show how the students are progressing, but also to determine which lessons, if any, might need some more focused attention and reteaching. You also can print and export the item analysis report as well. What I want to show you now is I referred to some additional support at the beginning of this webinar and kind of throughout. Um, and what I want to do is show you our uh, teacher resources. If I click on this help screen, it does give you options for quick tips and live chat. Also contact us, browser test. Um, and at the very bottom, there is a resources tab. And I'm going to click on that. It's going to take you into our Total Motivation Resource Center. And this is where we can find those great webinars and videos that I said that you can find to really dig a little bit deeper and to get some additional information. Um, we have Implement and Maximize, so you can read a little bit about those. But what I want to focus on right now is just um, the things that I highlighted. So I'm going to go ahead and go to How to Resources and click on Webinars. And you can find any of our upcoming webinars to register for, as well as any of our on-demand uh, webinars that we have already recorded. At the beginning of this webinar, I mentioned closing out the school year with Motivation Online. That's going to help you have some ideas about how you can wrap up um, the end of the school year and, and get everything out so then you have a fresh start for summer school with Motivation Online. So you can watch that at your um, convenience. I go back up to How To Resources, there is a tutorial videos link to, and if I go there, that's going to give you all of the information involved with registration. So I said you might want to walk through the step-by-step -step teacher registration process. You can view this short tutorial video about that, as well as um, we did highlight um, running reports, and also archiving and promoting students, which is something that we, of course, want to do to get a fresh start with summer, uh, get all those kids out of the system, get those assignments taken away, so anything that we assign in the summer, we'll be ready for them to go. 
Also, we do have um, tech support information. Um, and the complete user guide is here, as well as a quick start guide, system requirements, compatibility. You can chat with us. Um, find FAQs if you have a question. Someone else might have had that question as well. Um, you can lo lo locate Motivation Online login from here. So if you want to go back into the system, you can do that, as well as if you want to locate that resources page again. If you're not logged in, you can actually do that. It's in the top right-hand corner of your screen, and you can access that resources page as well. Now this concludes our webinar into summer school, and we wish you so much success with summer school this year. Thank you for your time.